Hey there, and welcome back to the Thousand Ant YouTube channel. I'm Matt Shell, and in this video, I'm going to give you an update on my Untitled Cute Space game that's gonna focus on showing some more in-engine work that I've been doing lately. I've gotten back into Unity, done some prototyping, and I actually have some stuff to show you, so let's get started. So I've been doing a bunch of videos recently talking about big picture, game design, production, financing, all that kind of stuff. Here, I wanna actually show you some stuff in the game. So I have gotten back into prototyping. Now, one big change that happened is I have created this kind of new environmental framing for the game, which is around a different feeling of space, for lack of a better term. So my initial idea was this kind of small jewel box space station world and I had kind of knocked that up in the early prototype. And what that kind of pushed me towards was this much more like UI focused version of the game where a lot of what you're doing is manipulating things in menus. And I realized that I didn't find that very cool or interesting. So what I've done is I've created this new space, which is this bubble ship, what I'm calling it. This is inspired by e and Bank's culture series where you have these huge spaceships that are basically just force fields with a lot of stuff kind of floating around inside them. So there isn't this very sharp idea of the ship hull and the kind of metal container of the ship. It's actually more just a, a force field floating in space with stuff inside it. And, and that was a very freeing idea to create this idea of a spaceship that's more like just a house floating in space. And there's this kind of garden on top and there's this big cube of water, which is just a kind of a fancy at this point, but, but may turn into something more, these kind of floating gardens. So one of the things that came out of some of the creative conversations that I'm having with some of my new collaborators on the project was this idea that maybe because we're in space and we're moving into this bigger, more wide open space, maybe there's some fun play we can do with gravity. And I thought that was pretty interesting, this kind of MC Escher-esque, houses with walls pointing in different directions. The ceiling is the floor and the wall can serve as the ceiling and all that kind of stuff. And I thought that might be a cool thematic tie-in with space. So what I created were these mechanics where you can actually walk onto the walls. And this was achieved using this uh, character movement fundamentals controller, which is a great asset store package that I've been using on this. And it was really easy to just feed in an arbitrary gravity direction and orientation. I did a little tween to rotate the character and then just point gravity in a new direction and the character controller just kept working. So if you're looking for a kind of versatile character controller assets, I recommend checking it out, Character Movement Fundamentals. I'll put a link in the description. In that same gravity orientation mode, I've been playing with what is the space mining actually gonna look like? In the early prototypes, I just had this more kind of EVE Online style mining where you just have these droids that are just orbiting around an asteroid in space and you're kind of passively watching. But I realized that maybe that wasn't very exciting or interesting. It was a little bit of a missed opportunity for something that is a kind of a core activity of the game. So instead, I am prototyping something that's a little bit more like maybe something like Astroneer. I've started to realize that Astroneer is actually a pretty relevant reference point for a lot of how I'm thinking about the game, especially in terms of the fact that it has a very embodied feeling. And they do some interesting stuff with the UI where it's a lot of kind of diegetic UI. So you're actually moving objects around instead of just manipulating menus, which I, which I like. And so I created this kind of Mario Galaxy inspired spherical asteroid and used some of the similar gravity manipulation stuff to make it so that the player could run around on the surface of the sphere. The other thing that I did was uh, used Unity's nav mesh components. These are the Unity nav mesh pieces that live not actually in the engine, but off on a GitHub repository that work with the nav mesh API. 
they're not that discoverable, which is why I mentioned that. But there's a nav mesh surface component in there that allows you to arbitrarily rotate nav meshes. So I created six nav meshes around this sphere, each on kind of the sides of a cube, and then stitched them together with nav mesh links. This is not perfect yet, but as a kind of a really quick proof of concept that it could be done, I got it working. Also, I don't think that the asteroids are gonna be fully procedural in terms of their base meshes. I think there'll be some procedural placement of elements, but the actual asteroid ground itself, I don't think I need to make procedural. Just hand crafting those navigation meshes is, is actually fine in that case. Uh, and so I got that working. The player can run around on the sphere. There's some little robots or one robot that can use a nav mesh agent to path around the sphere and that works. The other thing that I kind of reintegrated back into my prototyping is this VR mystery dungeon prototype. Now I actually did this back in around January or at least the first version of it. This was built off of my previously released asset store asset strata, which is a procedural level generation tool. I've actually taken it off the asset store recently. You can still get it on itch if you really want it, but I found that the amount of email support that I had to do versus the amount of money I was making didn't totally make it worth it. I'm thinking about some other plans for, for making it available in the future, but, uh, but for now it's, it's just on itch. I took that and I'm using it to generate these sort of flat dungeon style levels that the player can run around and collect things in. So it's definitely similar in some ways to the mining mechanic or the mining system. It's another running around and collecting mechanic, but it happens in this kind of procedural level. And I spent a little bit of time prettying that up. I added some post-processing and some particles and stuff and just gave the scene a little bit of a mood. I also added this mechanic where the player kind of shoots this laser out and the thing that they're collecting wobbles and then does a little tween to, to disappear, to, to scale down. And I spent a bunch of time doing the kind of boring work of managing items that spawn into the world via JSON and that when they're collected, they get recorded in a little database. All this item database work that I did in the first round of prototyping, which is funnily enough, kind of the only thing that I've really preserved from that first round of prototyping. It's almost like all new stuff at this point, but I am still using that where basically I have these scriptable object templates and then I can spawn items into the world and record their position and rotation, store that in JSON. And then when I want to reload the stuff that was spawned into the world, it's there, right? So there's a persistence layer via JSON. It mostly works. It's still got some bugs and stuff, but it's, but it's pretty much there. And that allows me to collect items and record them, you know, spawn items randomly, record their positions and recall them. And I think the next thing for me is gonna to be to try to tie some of all this stuff together and start trying to get to a point where I can actually test some of the systemic interactions. One of the things that's pushed me back into prototyping is that I have felt like I've been doing this stuff on paper and I think it's getting clearer and clearer, but I don't feel like I can get the information that I need just from looking at it on paper at this point. I think there's probably some really good, you know, game designer out there who could do it all on paper still, but that's not me, right? I kind of need to touch it and look at it and see how it actually feels. So I'm now starting to take some of those ideas that I shared in my videos about loops and systems and starting to actually implement them in the game slowly. That is just a quick update on some of the actual prototyping work that I'm doing now, some of the more Unity focused work been fun to get back in the engine after spending a lot of times on diagrams and planning and thinking about funding and stuff. So I had a good time doing that. So drop me a comment down below if you have any tips about prototyping systemic gameplay, actually testing it and implementing it in engine. This is something I feel a little bit nervous about somehow, which is why I'm trying to kind of push into it now. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing if you're not already. We appreciate it. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.